Cheryl is a senior environmental specialist with uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife Native Plant Program. She has a BS in biological conservation from Sacramento State University and an MS in ecology from UC Davis. Now, um, I wanted to start out with her because, of course, California Fish and Wildlife is responsible for the conservation of California's botanical resources. And the Native Plant Program coordinates the statewide, um, finding my glasses don't help much, <coughs> the statewide um, um, plant conservation efforts. And her talk is titled, The Role of California Department of Fish and Wildlife in plant, Native Plant Conservation. So, Chair? Hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Claire, for the introduction, um, and my timers are there. Um, uh, as Claire mentioned, I'm going to talk about the role of the department in native plant conservation. Um, so the goals of my presentation are to talk to you about how plants fit in at our department, and I'm also going to go over the plant programs within our department. So the mission statement of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife is to manage California's diverse fish, wildlife, and plant resources and their habitat, both for ecological values and use and enjoyment by the public. Okay, there you go. This was my punchline. Plant resources are called out in our mission statement. Sorry that took so long. But now that I've ruined the pictures, usually when people think of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, they think of the California Department of Fish and Game. They think of hunting and fishing. But the California Department of Fish and Wildlife is responsible for management of many, many more resources in California, all of California's natural resources. So, to reflect this, in 2013, the legislature changed the name of the department to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Um, and in our code, wildlife is defined as animals, birds, plants, fish, amphibians, and reptiles. So we made the name. But I also want to point out that fish made the name twice. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to talk a bit about the programs um, that are related to plants within our department. We have the California Natural Diversity Database, VegCamp, uh, my program, the Native Plant Program, and then our regions play a huge role in plant conservation. So the California Natural Diversity Database is responsible for inventorying the status and distribution of rare species, and they compile this data, these data and map it um, in GIS. They coordinate with the CMPS Rare Plant Program on ranking plants. Um, they also use this data and provide it to agencies, uh, consulting firms, nonprofits, et cetera, for use in environmental review um, and conservation planning. Um, and these data can be accessed through the Rare Find program, which is available to subscribers online. Um, spatial data can be accessed through the Map Viewer um, online called BIOS, or also through downloads, GIS downloads for use in ArcMap and um, in other GIS programs. Uh, I want to mention that this is a positive sighting database, so um, the CVDB is only as good as the data it receives. So it's really important that if you're out there surveying and you come across a native plant or a rare plant population, that you fill out this form that you can find online and submit it to the CNDDB. Um, there are other ways you can submit your data. You can submit um, uh, GIS layers, you can submit reports or other spreadsheets or access databases. And I put the website up here, hopefully you can see it for the CNDDB, you can Google it. Um, because you can contact them and work with them on the type of data that, that would be appropriate to submit. Next, I'm going to talk just a little about VegCamp, the Vegetation Classification and Mapping Program. I hope you guys got to see Todd's talk last night. Um, he's one of the co-founders of VegCamp, and then Diana talked yesterday about VegCamp's role in environmental review, so I'm not really going to go into that. I don't have time anyway. Um, but I just want to mention um, VegCamp is responsible with the CMPS Vegetation Program for developing state standards for vegetation surveying, mapping, data storage, and reporting um, in accordance with federal standards. And this is a huge project. I'm, hopefully you saw Diana's talk yesterday. Um, they go out and they collect the data and they analyze the data and they make keys to the natural communities. 
And then they have to go out and map the areas and rank the uh, natural communities um, uh, in accordance with their rarity. So it's huge. Uh, and it's for the whole state. And the goal is to provide, hopefully I'm not misspeaking, but the goal is to provide a map for the entire state of California. Uh, VegCamp also provides training and support for creation and use of these maps um, and the uh, standards for how to, how to create these. And then these data, this is what Diana's talk was about yesterday. Um, they're provided, um, these layers are provided in BIOS um, for environmental, the environmental review process. So next I'm gonna talk about um, the regions in our department. These aren't a program, but we have staff in all of our regions that cover uh, conservation of our natural resources. And this, the regions play a huge role in conservation planning. Um, and they're responsible for these activities, uh, which I'm gonna talk about, so I'm not gonna read it. Um, I want to mention that there are six geographic regions that, in our state that cover different areas, and then we have a seventh region, which is marine. So the regions are responsible for environmental review of projects. Um, under the California Endangered Species Act, it is illegal to take a listed species. Take, possess, import, or export. But here I'm talking more about take. And so the regions are responsible for issuing permits to uh, under the environmental review process and within the permits they are responsible for coming up with mitigation full mitigation for impacts to listed species um, they also are responsible for commenting on environmental documents under CEQA uh, and CEQA is is probably the best protection that we have for our resources in California because it covers um, a lot more than the Endangered Species Act uh, it covers all rare species and rare plant communities so it's a huge undertaking, and this is just a brief overview. I, I don't have time to go into this process. Our regions also manage land in California. We have over a million acres of land. This surprised me when I, when I Googled this. We have over a million acres of land within our state and 749 properties, and our regions are responsible for managing these properties for their natural resources. Many of these properties were set aside for plants, for the ecological reserves, but also wildlife areas um, for managing our, um, our game populations and our wildlife populations, and then other properties. Oops. There we go. Um, the regions also play a role in conservation planning. Um, there's a couple, I listed a couple ways they do that. Natural, con yeah. nat natural community conservation plans, or NCCPs, that are involved in, in uh, creating those, which are large scale planning documents. Um, conservation and mitigation making, and there's many more. I just um, I just listed a couple examples. Whoop! Let's go back. Uh, gosh, I'm really struggling with this little clicker. Help! There we go. Okay. So the regions. This is a really important role that the regions have, and it's it's not a, a process, but it's they have the local knowledge and the relationships with people, and they know what's going on on the ground. Um, and this is really important. They have relationships with private landowners, and this is really important um, in conservation planning to build trust um, within the local areas. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna just not do well with this clicker thing. Now I'm gonna talk about our program, the Native Plant Program. Um, it's composed of two full-time staff, myself and my colleague, Jeff Bjerke. Um, and we're really excited because we've been a program of two for a really long time. We've covered the entire state of California. But we recently got funding for a third person to join our program, and they're starting at the end of the month. We also have a part-time scientific aide, Beth Beyer, who was running around with the microphone yesterday, there she is. Um, and our manager, Isabel Bear, who also manages timber conservation planning. So these are just a few functions of the Native Plant Program that I'm going to talk about. Why am I so bad at this clicker thing? Erin, I should have borrowed yours. Failing. Uh, so these are a few of our, of our functions, and I'm just, I'm not going to read this. I'm just going to talk about them. So we are responsible for reviewing listing petitions under the California Endangered Species Act. So if a listing petition comes in for a plant, comes to our program, we review it and we make a recommendation on whether or not we think listing this, these plants are warranted. And in the last two years, I swear I only pushed it once. 
Well, we listed three plants as endangered. I'm, I'm not going to go back. You saw that. Um, there was post yellow leptosiphon, Lassix lupin, and a uh, little more tar plant. We're also um, responsible for um, thank you, um, conducting five year status reviews for listed plants. So these are plants that are already on the threatened and endangered species list. We haven't been able to do this for a really long time. We haven't had the funding or the staff, but recently um, we did receive some funding dedicated to do this, this work. And so we'll be starting up the five year reviews again really soon. Uh, and with these five year reviews, it, the purpose is to uh, recommend a status change or no change, um, just to kind of see where the plants, where the plants are. Afraid to push the button. Okay, we also do some rare plant monitoring um, on our properties in the state. We are, our goal is to um, create several standardized monitoring protocols for these, these plants. Um, they're listed species and uh, the protocols would be to inform adaptive management on our properties. And we're managing, or excuse me, we're monitoring um, 14 species on 13 properties. Oh, please work. This one takes a second to load. There we go. Those are a few of the species that we're managing. Um, uh, the other, um, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about that our program does. We are responsible, as I mentioned, it's. Um, prohibited under the Fish and Game Code to take listed species. Um, it's also prohibited to possess listed species or, plant, or parts of listed species, or to import or export listed species, um, even for things that are considered good. So even for research and science and education, um, you need a permit to do these activities. There's two, type of, two types of permits that we issue. One is called a voucher collecting permit, and I'm trying to switch the slide while I talk. There we go. Um, and oftentimes in the field, when you're surveying, you need to collect plants to identify them. Uh, and these permits cover those activities. They cover collection for vouchering populations of listed plant species. We issue them to individuals. There are conditions that limit impacts to these species. They're valid for three years. They're free. And they require, um, we have annual reports that require disclosure of your results each year. Um, and we actually provide a form for doing this, so the, the reports are pretty um, easy to submit. And how do you get one of these permits? Well, we have the application available online, so you can just fill it out, and then there's instructions at the bottom, which I'm sure you can't read, but you just email it to us or mail it to us. Um, and the turnaround time is really fast, I would say two to three weeks. And the last, uh, the second type of permit, the other type of permit that I'm going to talk about is um, there are permits for other activities, not just voucher collection, but for research or things that are more involved for listed species. Uh, seed collection, propagation, reintroduction, genetics, anything that would involve collecting pieces or parts or whole plants um, for doing even good things for these plants. And you get one of these by sending us a proposal, contacting us, and we will work with you to develop your permit. They're tailored specifically to your project, so they're a little more involved in those voucher permits, and they can take a bit longer. These are a few of the projects that we've permitted. Um, maybe you saw Jake's uh, poster upstairs about the MC Kia Grande Flora reintroduction. Um, also, we have agreements with several institutions throughout the state for uh, like botanic gardens and herbaria for long-term seed storage, vouchers, specimen storage for listed species, um, and other types of research, germination studies, um, uh, and other types of things. I'm almost done. Ah. Um, so, here we have a public email address. Um, it's nativeplants at wildlife.ca.gov. So if you have any ideas or have questions about any listed plants, or even rare plants or native plants, go ahead and you can email the public email address. You can also email me. Uh, my email address is at the end of this presentation, if it works. We also have a, a web page, which um, is shown here. And much of the information that I just covered is available on the web page. And with that, if it works, there. Um, that's the end of my talk, and if anyone has any questions, um, thank you for your time. Sorry about the technical difficulties.